Well, I'm back with more wiring. I'll be covering how to wire up a standalone PSI harness for my LS1. So to start this wiring boondoggle, you have to route the harness through a 2 inch hole. Where you put this hole is up to you. I used my HVAC delete plate. And now you have to push all the connectors through this 2 inch hole. Not fun, but you only have to do it once. The rubber grommet is pushed and locked in. The wires on the other side of the panel go inside of the car. So most sane people would just route the wires where the factory harness went through the firewall. But I'm a crazy person, so in the wiring goes right where my HVAC used to be. This HVAC delete plate was an eBay part that I painted wrinkle black. It looks pretty good and also serves as my AccuSump mount that I'll use later on. It's a good idea to spread the wiring out to get a better idea of where all the plugs go. The wiring harness comes with a manual that will tell you what plug is what. The passenger coil pack plug goes in first, followed by the passenger injectors. The cam sensor and map sensor are located behind the intake manifold. The driver's side coil packs and injectors are plugged in. The coolant temp sensor plug goes in next, followed by the alternator plug. The idle air control and throttle position sensor plugs are located in the throttle body. This plug is for the MAF sensor, but I haven't made my intake yet, so there's nothing there. The CAM sensor and MAP sensor are located behind the intake manifold. And this plug goes to the NOx sensors. This longer pigtail with two plugs goes to a T56 manual transmission. One plug is for the speed sensor while the other goes to the reverse lockout. This square plug is for the O2 sensor, but I currently don't have my exhaust finished, so it's just going to hang here. These two large red terminals go on the starter, while this plug is for the crank sensor. With the starter removed, plug in the crank sensor. And when 
the starter is reinstalled, the two red wires with the large terminals are attached on the back via the main power stud. I can't get a camera down there to film it, so this picture will just have to do. The standalone wiring has a ground terminal that goes to the driver's side head. This square plug is for the O2 sensor, but I currently don't have my exhaust finished. As far as the ECU mounting, I mounted mine where the HVAC and the speaker used to be. Now the fuel pump relay that comes with the wiring harness needs to be fed power via a large wire, ideally 10 gauge. In order for the fuel pump relay to power my fuel pump, I need to run wires from the relay all the way to the back of the car. So I'll be running a 10 gauge wire through the center console and out the back with one of my prototype bulkheads. This bulkhead allows you to use a sealed plug to easily unplug the fuel pump for maintenance or anything else. These will be available to buy in the future, but just not right now. The 3D printed bulkhead mount is screwed in from behind and then the plug is screwed in from underneath the car. The PSI wiring kit comes with the terminal that secures a wire to the fuel pump relay. A 10 gauge feed wire and two fuel level sending wires are shown for my aeromotive gas tank. I routed the fuel pump wires inside of the console. And then the fuel pump wire is plugged in to the relay. If you're interested in more of the fuel tank wiring, I'll show that in another video. This little red 12 gauge wire is critical. It needs a 12 volt power source when the engine is cranking and in the run position. I'm running a custom switch panel instead of an ignition switch, but a stock swap would use an area that has both run and cranking as a 12 volt source. The OBD2 port wires are extended and I mounted it near the stock OBD1 port. This way I won't accidentally kick the Bluetooth receiver and one of the last things you need to do is ground the wiring harness to the chassis. Okay, so that's all done. If my engine had an oil system plumbed right now, I'd be able to start it up, but I'm not quite there yet. And to answer the questions that I know that I'll get in this video is why didn't I use the Holly Terminator system? Well, there's a few good reasons for this. So the first reason and the biggest one is I need OBD2 to sync with my autocross data logger. The Holly system currently doesn't have any support for that. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen one of my autocross videos. The overlay can be done with OBD2, so I can see any sensor data linked to the video. It's pretty cool stuff. And the second reason is my engine is a cam only LS1, the most basic LS combo around. I don't have any reason to use a turbo or a supercharger, so all the features that the Holly system offers would be unused. And the third reason is I really like OEM reliability. Stock ECUs will keep on going for years and years and hundreds of thousands of miles, all problem free. I'll take reliability over features any day. I hope you like this video. Consider supporting me on Patreon and follow me on Instagram. And maybe this video clip will inspire you to go autocrossing. It's pretty fun.